I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us. And we begin this hour with a story of love, dangerous obsession, and cold-blooded murder. William Coday was a mild-mannered librarian from Florida with a high IQ and a mastery of languages. He thought he met the love of his life when 30-year-old Colombian immigrant Gloria Gomez came into the library where he worked. He became obsessed with her. When Gloria wanted to end their relationship, Coday lured her to his Fort Lauderdale apartment by making up a story that he had cancer. When she got there, he bludgeoned her 57 times with a hammer, then stabbed her with a knife 87 times. For months, he led authorities on an international manhunt as he traveled through Europe and Northern Africa. He was finally arrested when he returned to the United States in October of 2001. Years before this killing, he was convicted of killing another woman in Germany. He was released after serving less than half of a three-year sentence because of psychiatric problems. This Sunday on Court TV's Judgment with Ashley Banfield, they take a deeper dive into the trial and the twisted mind of William Coday. Let's take a look. When the case was first presented, we did not have a full history of his, of his mental illness. Just superficial knowledge, the fact that, that he had committed another homicide in, in Germany uh, on, a, on a, another deceased uh, victim, uh, Lisa Hollinger. This man killed two women, one when he was about 20 years old or so, and 20 years later, another woman and in between, there was absolutely no evidence of violence. There's a bit of what William Coday is like that's actually terrifying. It's, it's straight out of movies. It's the, the mild-mannered librarian with the thin glasses and the, the slim frame. He's that guy. It's unsettling to think that somebody so nice harbors this capacity to not just kill, but to kill brutally. Dear Gloria, they're going to be looking for me, I know. They will hunt for me. As I watch this crepusculo fade out, I think of all those crepusculos we have watched together. Forgive me, dear Gloria for having denied you numerous other crepusculos. That's a little scary. Let's bring in Court TV special contributor and the host of Judgment with Ashley Banfield. Ashley Banfield, this guy is, is scary. Well, I mean, creepy doesn't even begin to describe Bill Coday. You heard him say, I think, three times, crepusculo, crepusculo. Crepusculo is like a manifesto. It really means twilight. So when he says we watched crepusculos together, he's talking about his murdered girlfriend, the one he murdered, uh, not being able to watch the sunset or the twilight with him anymore. And, you know, at the same time, this is a manifesto that just goes on and on. I mean, it just it, it, it gives Kaczynski a run for his money. I'll be honest with you, Vinny. What's so disturbing about it is you look at that guy in court and he just looks so normal. And I get it. What does a killer really look like? Well, it's frightening when, when they just don't look like a killer, right? They just look so unassuming. He's a librarian. He's clean cut and he's well mannered and, and all the rest. And, and this guy not only murdered Gloria Gomez, 144 bludgeons uh, with a hammer and a knife, two hammers actually and a knife, but he did the same thing 20 years earlier to another girlfriend in Germany. Only served a matter of months for that. Don't get me started. But I want to just uh, show you a little bit about the, the, the way he actually carried this out. He lured her to his house saying, I have cancer and help me, I'm dying. Gloria's already with someone else, engaged to someone else. And that someone else does not want her to go, understandably. But, you know, figures at the end, it's Gloria's made her mind up. And, oh, God, if she only knew that 144 bludgeons were awaiting her. Have a look. On the 11th of July of 1997, a Friday morning, Gloria Gomez left her home in Miami to take a trip to Fort Lauderdale to visit a friend. 
Her purpose of the trip in her own mind was to comfort a friend who had told her and said that he may be suffering from and dying from terminal cancer. But little did she know that her trip to comfort her friend was a trap for her bloody and savage murder. He lied to bring her to his home. Well, that's terrible, but Lying is not something that is foreign to most people. We, we've all lied about one thing or another. It's very hard to empathize with the clear, cold articulation of a vicious, vicious murder. 144 blunt and sharp force wounds later, she was dead. It was the law of desire and the law of obsession that led to the premeditated first-degree murder death of Gloria Gomez. And the evidence will show that. So what well, you're looking at him in court, uh, rest assured, he's medicated. He was medicated all through that trial. Uh, I, I can't imagine what he would have been like were he not medicated, but his friends all said he was this quiet, mild-mannered librarian. So. Who knows? But I can imagine he didn't look like that during the murder. Vinny, what would you do if you had a case like this where it was not a matter of, you know, who done it? It's a matter of literally life and death. That's your client. I got to save this guy's life. Yeah, this is you look at him and you look at what happened and why it happened. And you've got to dig deep and try to explain that someone is is off. Right. It's not. You're not going to get a legal insanity defense, right? You're not going to be able to. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work at trial. No. So you've got to use. He went on the lam. Right. Yeah, I mean, you, can't get, you can't get insanity if someone's, like, escaping, because they know it's wrong if they're escaping. It's the con consciousness of guilt. You know right from wrong. You know exactly what you did was wrong, and you're, and you're fleeing from justice. So it, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's extremely difficult, because the jury is going to see all the evidence. They're going to see exactly what happened and what a horrible, horrible death this woman um, endured. And, and you think about why she was there. She was there to help him. You know, it was, it was, like, yeah. a, it was like a trip. Okay, I feel, I feel bad for this guy, right? I broke up. My, I've moved on, but he's got no one. Let me see if I can help him. And that's, I think that's such an aggravating factor here. And, and it, it makes people mad, right? And if you're a juror and you're mad and you like Gloria, uh, that's never good, you know, for, for the defendant. But I will say this, the savageness of his attack on Gloria. I mean, she fought for her life and, and the medical examiner said she was alive for every single one of those blows. Imagine 144 blows from a hammer and a knife and you're alive for all but one of them. That's what he said. There was blood all over the walls. She fought back. She got the weapon back. He got another hammer. I mean, it was a terrible, terrible scene. That doesn't sit well either. But the defense actually used it to their benefit. That's what's amazing. They said, are you kidding me? This kind of an attack, this is not premeditated. This is crazy obsession. You cannot tell me that a man premeditates an attack like this. It's just too savage. So I want to play you a little bit about that strategy. But you should also know that, you know, Gloria's visa was running out. And the only way for her to be able to stay in the U.S. was, you know, to get married. But it was very clear to everybody that she was not interested in marrying William Code for a visa. She was marrying someone else because she loved him. So that's something that, you know, if it was playing into the trial, it was a desperate attempt. But have a look at that whole strategy about the savageness of this attack. These are the hands that killed Gloria Gomez. We come to you in full admission of his responsibility for horrible homicide. In Bill's mind, and this is the one woman in the world he couldn't live without. Yet he caused her death. Because he was so intelligent, I couldn't use any kind of manipulation with him. I had to simply empathize with him and not contradict his version of what had happened, even though I knew that it did not fit physical evidence. When the prosecutor tells you that Gloria's immigration status was at risk, what he really means is that her visa had expired. She was either going to have to leave the United States or find a way to stay. And she needed to get married. There's no indication 
that she's engaging in a relationship with him only because she wants citizenship. It's a stereotype, but it's something that the defense has to bring up to explore just to give the jury any hint that William Coday might have felt wronged. The kind of violence you'll see in this case is not premeditated. No one premeditates that kind of violence. It's too excessive. I mean, Vinny, he's got a point, right? Like, how bizarre. If you're a juror, you're probably all upside down thinking, wait a minute. I hate this guy for what he did. He brutalized. He he tortured uh, this woman. I, I want, you know, my own revenge uh, for, for Gloria Go Go Gomez's suffering. But at the same time, it kind of does make sense, doesn't it? If you're that crazy, if you're that obsessed, I don't know if you can premeditate 144 injuries and blows. Well, you know, there's two parts to that, right? There, there's the in the moment part, right? Okay, and I, I understand his argument, and he, he could get some uh, traction with that. Uh, but as a prosecutor, I would come back and take a look at the big picture, like how did she get there in the first place? I mean, that's all mm -hmm. part of, of the plan. But I, I like what he's doing because I think more defense attorneys should do this, which is you take, you take and embrace the worst fact against you and try to say, okay, and you accept it, but then you try to twist it, spin it, you know, yeah. turn it upside down. And, you know, sometimes it's effective. Sometimes it is because you can't avoid it. Hey, you cannot avoid that times. fact. It, if, it, if it don't fit, you quit. Come on, lots of times it's effective. You just turn a really bad fact, you know, right on upside down and, and people will believe anything. Um, so th there's another bad fact and it was the Crepuscolo, the, the manifesto about Twilight. What a weird name, but anyway. Um, so that was something else that both sides were using. The prosecution said he wrote this manifesto to deflect. He was off, you know, on the lamb in Europe and tried to like manipulate everybody by writing this crazy manifesto. But the defense uh, said, no, this shows just the obsessive mind of this man. And so uh, again, kind of this masterful argument, I felt bad for jurors. We're gonna have to sort through both of these two stories, but have a look at this. My feeling from the very start was that he was, through his own self-serving statements, was, was manipulating uh, everyone in this particular case. I need not focus on, uh, on, on plan, but on his decision beforehand, a conscious decision to kill someone before the killing occurs. That's all premeditated intent is. Describe uh, what the corpuscular is for the jury. It's like a, a letter that he wrote to her. Did you ask him about that? Uh, I did. What did he say? We discussed uh, what he was doing while he was in Europe, and he told me that uh, he was going about the task of writing the crepuscle. I watched this magnificent crepuscle, knowing that soon, darkness will settle in. Perhaps one day soon, permanent darkness will descend on me too. I shall, that day, enter the night and join you, dear Gloria. It really was a kind of journal letter to Gloria, explaining to himself, perhaps, and to her as to how it got to that point that he ended up killing her. Because I believe he really loved her, but he loved the Gloria he created in his mind, the delusion of Gloria rather than the real person. So I guess, you know, you're a prosecutor, Vinny. It's a good thing the prosecutors pretty much always get to go last, you know, with the closings because they've got the burden. Um, because I kind of feel like if I were a prosecutor and I were addressing a jury in closing, I would say, enough with the jazz hands. This is what he did. P.S. Here's a picture. I'll leave it in your capable hands, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? Like, you can razzle-dazzle as much as you want and twist the stories as much as you want. Uh, but with that last word, you better make it really good. And as it turned out, this prosecutor obviously made it really good because the, the jury decided uh, not only guilty, obviously, but also on death. However, I did not spoil the ending of this documentary on Sunday night on Justice with Ashley Banfield. There is a huge twist. 
All right, the big twist, Sunday night, 8 p.m., Judgment with Ashley Banfield. Thank you so much, Ashley. You betcha, Vinny.